Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for another episode of Pirate's Bay Farm. So, it's been a while and when last we met I was harvesting canola. Well, I did end up with about 150,000 liters of canola and I'll tell you what, the, uh, the buyers around here have had a little bit of a bidding war lately and there's a really good price. So, I need to get that sold off today. Um, cotton also has jumped up in price and I figured if I need to run the cotton bales down I'm going to take the equipment I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of this beat up old tractor and I want to get rid of these old cedars that I really just don't need anymore. And then of course I got my cotton bales. I am going to keep this trailer but this thing, this beast, this contraption, it's going also. Farewell cotton. You sort of served us well. Now one thing I haven't told you yet is that uh, Elizabeth is here today. She has agreed to come over and help me out because I've got a lot that I need to get done. And now oh, look at that, she's here already. I'm sitting here chattering away and uh, she showed up. Hey Elizabeth, how are you? Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I moved the flagpole. I think maybe I did, but I can't remember. Um, it was poorly placed, I have to say. <laughs> so our pirate flag is... Uh, over here now and out of the way so how I'm gonna get started is I'm going to drive the thing down to the shop real close by is the cotton bale sell point so I'll be able to sell those off and I'm gonna ask Lizbeth if she won't start running canola for me down to the harbor which is exactly where I'm going also so with that said we should probably get the show on the road. If you'll drive the big truck, it's already loaded with the first load. It's going to be about four loads of canola that needs to get run down there. But I want to hurry before the price starts dropping. I did spend some time getting everything cleaned up around here. That was absolutely necessary. Let's make sure this equipment's not going to shift around. There we go. Oh, this uh, this cotton harvester. I'll be glad to see it go. <laughs> I didn't use it for very long, but I have to tell you, it's, um, well, it's something. I don't know what exactly, but it is something. And it does not like to drive very well at all. And I have to tell you, <clears throat> Apparently, grass around here is extremely lucrative. Now, if you'll notice, I've got $246,000 sitting in my pocket right now, when yesterday I had about one hundred and six. dollars So, as you'll recall, I was emptying the bunker silo of the silage I had made as the uh, biogas plant, which is right here on the left, by the way. Um, was churning through that I kept adding more and I finally got the bunker silo empty well when the payment came through for that it was about hundred and thirty five thousand dollars this place pays exceptionally well for silage and just so you know this is not any kind of an adjustment on my part this is actually part it's built into the map breaking character for just a minute to let you know that on Pineapple Bay, the map maker decided to make silage very profitable. I didn't know that at the time, but um, it's definitely going to be a way to lead us toward making that rum as expensive as it's going to be. But more importantly, it's going to be a way that I can, can uh, create fertilizer without the ability to buy the expensive, well, not even expensive, the uh, illegal chemical fertilizers on the island. So, that's where we stand for today. I'm going to haul equipment. Lisbeth, at least to start with, is going to be hauling canola. I'm going to try not to kill myself in this piece of junk. And we're going to get that taken care of and see where we stand but I think we're gonna be sitting pretty because these cotton bales are gonna sell well 
the canola is going to sell exceptionally well. The price is outstanding. It's around $1,500 per 1,000 liters. And, uh, well, we'll see where we're at. So I will catch back up with you once the first leg of today's journey is complete. Well, I managed to squirrel this thing down here, and it was probably a mistake, but hey, the cotton bales are sold, and they brought in $95,583. And yes, all my equipment is falling off. It's a good thing I am so bloody close to the, uh, the shop right here <laughs> across the road. Nope, stay on there. Well, we're close enough now, even if it doesn't stay on there. I can uh, I can manage it. Come on, you're a piece of junk anyway, and I don't want you anymore. Let's make sure this stuff gets into the sale point. Let's see what let's see what we got here. Make sure. Okay, the cedars. Well, oh, worth almost ten grand for that cedar. That's not too bad. Uh, nine grand for that one. I'll take it. Uh, what else do I have here? Oh, I don't have the tractor yet. Actually, that will work out. I'm going to sell this stupid piece of junk cotton round baling thing. And I'm still going to lose a lot of money on it, but I don't care. I want it out of my life. Now I can grab this junky old tractor. <laughs> and now I've got a header sitting around. You know what? I'm just going to smash it in. Smash it in so I can get it sold. I want no memory left. I'm going to pull this trailer out of the way and I'll come back down here and get it later. At least I got the trailer out of the deal, and that's going to be pretty darn handy regardless. And I guess I can't complain too much about this little tractor because, well, to some degree it has done what I've needed it to do. It's just obnoxious. Let's see if that'll do me. Uh, yes, good. Sell. Well, the header was worth 14 grand, so I didn't do too bad on that deal, really. I didn't. And this junky old tractor is only going to net me $3,000. So that's done. I'm going to walk back over to the harbor now, catch up with Elizabeth before she heads back up to the farm for the next load of canola, and uh, have her give me a ride. Well, Elizabeth dropped me back off at the farm, and I knew that this uh, oilseed radish needed to get cultivated back in to get, get me that uh, fertilizer state. So that's what I started working on, and she kept running canola for me. Got that all sold off, and it's been a heck of a payday here. $661,000 we're up to. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Now what she did, she uh, when she got that done, she ran over to her farm to borrow or to grab one of her tractors. She should be getting here any time now. She called not that long ago and said she was on her way with the tractor. And while she finishes cultivating this field, I am going to set up my cedar and uh, start getting a new crop in here because um, uh, it looks like she's coming now. So I'm just going to wait on her to get here. Because, like I said, this is one seriously expensive venture, and it needs to keep moving forward. Um, and I need to think about what I'm going to do with this money, because I do... Uh, and we're just going to swap tractors to make things easier on both of us. And I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do with this money, because, well... There are many, many things that uh, need to start moving forward here. Now, like I said, 
getting the sawmill set up, that's going to be almost half a million dollars, which I could do. But I really, really, really need to start generating a lot more grass. So I'm still thinking about the possibility of... Uh, buying that grass field I was talking about for 350000 so I can start pushing that into the bunker silo and start making a lot of digestate because I was looking at the the stats on field 44 and that's the big one of course and just to do that field one time with digestate I would need like 180,000 liters of digestate. So I'm, if I want to get rid of the oilseed radish, I need to start producing a ton of grass. Now the flip side of that is, okay, yes, I'm adding a lot of work, but at the same time, I'm generating a lot more income because every time I turn in silage to the biogas plant over there, it's going to uh, gonna pay me for that. So I just have to think it through a little bit. Um, let's see here. We'll drop you. Pull up and we'll drop you. Pull up and drop you. Pull up and drop you. And last but not least, we'll drop you. I'm going to start with the closest one. And I think you all know the drill here by now. Maybe you don't. Maybe this is your first time. So. Basically, oh, I need to make sure that I'm setting these cedars. What am I going to put in today? What haven't I done? Let's see what soybeans will do for us on this Pineapple Bay Island. Let's see if soybeans won't treat us very well. I mean, I'm tempted to throw more canola in, but where's the fun in that? Let's do something new. Now this might seem like a big hassle, <laughs> getting this cedar set up, and to some degree it is, but based on what I had before, I'll spend the five minutes to set up the cedar the way it is, instead of the two or three hours, because basically I was using two of these cedars, but they they wouldn't hook up, they wouldn't connect, so... You saw them. I mean, I just sold them off. They were a little bit bigger than this, but not by much. And, uh... Well... This makes life significantly easier. Significantly easier. Words cannot express how significantly easier this, this makes my life. Even with the hassle of hooking everything together. And I think it was this one right here that did not get switched over to soybeans yet. And that is right. Good job, Harv. Sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back because God knows nobody else will do it for you. <laughs> I'm sure everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, now we just grab our bracket or brace or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to swing this right back around in front of these bad boys. About like so. Unfold it. Oh, and of course I, I just had to... Uh, Had to bump that cedar so it's not lined up anymore. That's lovely. Oh well, we'll sort it out. That's the nature of the beast. I 
<laughs> yeah, this is not working out as well as uh, I, I did such a good job of uh, lining everything up and now it's just going to make a mess of itself. See, this is what happens when you pat yourself on the back. <laughs> then you go and make a fool out of yourself and uh, destroy it all. Come on, you can get that hook in there. Come on, come on. Really close. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, man, that just popped right in there. And yes, we are completely set up for soybeans at this point. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Now, it's been extremely kind of Elizabeth to come over and help me, although to be fair, I did, uh, I did get her potato field taken care of. And if you've ever done potatoes, you know exactly how much work is involved in that, although I didn't personally do the work. I hired somebody to do it, but still. I played farm manager to get that job taken care of, so... Now I need to make sure all of these are turned on. Drop them down. Everything should be down. Let's see what we got working here. Yes, we are trucking. Works like a charm. And this is the sweet little tractor she's got here. Now, I don't know if you recall, but JCB is one of the brands that are available on the island. Very much one of the brands available on the island. Um, JCB signed a contract recently within the last year or so to provide agricultural equipment to South America, which opened the doors for them to be available on Pineapple Bay. And that's kind of a big deal, because they do make a very, very fine tractor, as you can see. And you know, it may be funky, it may be a little bit hard to set up, but I'll tell you what, this thing does a great job of planting a field. It put the canola in, it did my oilseed radish that I that's right over there that's being uh, plowed or cultivated in by Lisbeth to take care of that first level of fertilizer. So yeah, I, I have no complaints with this thing. It, it's been a lifesaver, if I'm completely honest, an absolute lifesaver.
one little spot to finish up here. Thank goodness. I feel like this field has taken forever. <laughs> and as you can see, the weeds are being exceptionally aggressive this time around, which is, needless to say, um, very, very annoying. Well, I'm going to hand Elizabeth's tractor back to her. Um, I'm sure she's got things that she needs to get done in her farm at this point, so I don't want to keep her. I think I'm going to go look at that grass field. I'm going to go look at it and see um, just what I think I might be able to do with it. And if it looks promising, like I said, it's going to require a lot of digestate to uh, do away with the oilseed radish. Or maybe I keep doing oilseed radish and do away with the rollers, which is probably the, the truth of it because the rollers are what take up the most time. I don't know. We'll see. But there's her tractor back to her. And apparently she's in a big hurry, so away she goes. Fair enough. Uh, looks like I've got equipment to put away today, which is not a problem. I'm going to grab my truck, run over and look at that grass field. Maybe I'll just buy it. Maybe that's what I'll do. Well, this is the grass field, and it is what it says it is. And man, it's a nice big expanse. I bet I would get a lot of grass off of this. I think realistically, it's probably going to be worth the money. And I'm pretty sure it'll pay for itself because the biogas plant is willing to pay exceptionally well for silage and I'll get the digestate I need so I really need to start cranking out silage I mean almost 200,000 liters of digestate just to take care of field 44 alone and then of course I'm going to need some kind of a spreader for that and maybe that's where I have to go talk to Elizabeth and uh, see about um Maybe getting one of those pieces of equipment that's not so easily or readily available on the island. Okay, so at this point, I have to issue a quick apology. Lost footage. <laughs> I have lost some footage. Um, but, as you can see, I did buy this big, big grass field down here. I have been mowing and pulling grass for quite some time and just finishing it up here when I realized uh, there was a problem. But I did buy the field and I've got a building in place because I'm gonna store my mower down here. I put in the building and even better, so much happened in that. <laughs> technical issues sometimes they happen anyway um, once Elizabeth went home for the for the afternoon I did call the store call the shop and as aggressive as those weeds were being on field 44 today and of course you know how tiny my equipment is I called the shop and I don't know, I, you know, sometimes you just assume that they don't have, because the supply is often frequently limited, although I've been pleasantly surprised upon occasion. And yes, it is a bit of a challenge finding a good route to that grass field, but I've been making this work for me, and I think I'll just keep doing that. I'm avoiding the other farmer's field and just using the uh, outskirts of it, so unless they get angry with me, I'm just going to keep doing it that way. But anyway... The shop, surprisingly, had a nice, big, fat weeder I could use. Not just use, I went, since I have cash on me today, I uh, actually went and bought a nice 15 meter weeder that I have got working field 44 right now with a helper. Because as you can see, we cannot afford to have weeds mucking up our harvest 
And when we make sure everything gets done the right way, well, the payoff today shows you exactly how well things can go. But the question of the hour is, what do you call a pirate with two arms and two legs? A rookie. <laughs> ah, the dad jokes. They never get old, do they? <laughs> Stop rolling your eyes. Stop it. We're going to learn a few interesting facts about pirates today that I don't think we've covered in the past. Just interesting things about the life of pirates. Now we've had the proverbial dad joke about how much does it cost for a pirate to get his ears pierced? And, uh, obviously the answer was buccaneer. But, interestingly, and you can see I've been working hard to try to keep this piled in the middle because I've discovered that the edges of these bunker silos don't like to work and play well together. So I've just kind of been rolling straight through the middle of it and starting to drop my load and, and trying to pile it as much as I can this time instead of getting it so flat and I'll go grab the big tractor and finish compacting this it's, al it's actually almost halfway done and there we go that's going to be a nice big pile and yeah I did pop pl or, uh, harvest my pasture at one point also and have a little bit, not a lot, maybe about 40,000 liters in that silo over there ready to be sold off. <clears throat> anyway, you know, people know pirates pierce their ears, blah blah blah, we all know that at this point. But what we didn't know, or what I didn't know at least, is that there was actually a reason that pirates wore earrings. And they believed superstitiously I might add there's no no scientific merit to it but superstitiously pirates believed that wearing an earring putting pressure on the earlobe would prevent seasickness so that was a common misconception amongst pirates that they could ward off their seasickness if they had earrings in I found that to be pretty darn interesting if I'm honest very interesting indeed and you know I didn't notice it before oddly enough maybe not so oddly I'll show you as we drive by in the big and big boy here as it takes 15 minutes to uh, fire its engines up come on big boy let's go As I said, the horses have been busy doing their jobs, and we've got another horse born. Outstanding. Another pony for the farm. I'll have to go back and check in on that, that little pony later. Right now, I need to get this work done. But yeah, pirates could be very superstitious. Um, something else that makes sense when you think about it but you wouldn't necessarily immediately think about is that pirates to a pirate a map was like gold it was one of the best treasures they could get their hands on look at that big old weeder out there working that is outstanding man we've needed to grow up here and been getting lucky and it wasn't that expensive. It was only about, um, oh, about $11,000. So no complaints there. But yeah, maps were, maps, especially if they had uh, navigational information on them, were very, very, very important to uh, pirates. And they, they treated them almost like treasure. 
And check out our forest here. Let's look at this real quick. I think you might have seen it a little bit while I was seeding, but it is really starting to progress. It's, it's almost to a harvestable state. I know it will get bigger than this, but wow, these trees are really starting to do their jobs. Woo and who. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, at one point, um, there was a pirate who had a map that they had reprinted or recreated or whatever you want to call it um, in a very nice format. You know, they had it done professionally and in color and all of that stuff and presented it as a gift to a king. So that's exactly, you know, that shows you exactly how valuable maps during that time could be. And of course, if you're in a profession where you need to travel the world, it just makes sense that a map would be one of your best friends, without a doubt. In fact, navigators were highly prized, highly prized people in the seafaring community in general, not just amongst pirates. <clears throat> A skilled navigator was something that you just could not do without and navigators would keep very detailed books and these books were called rudders r-u-t-t-e-r-s and you could make if you could steal a navigator sometimes they were called pilots depending on what country you were from but if you could steal a pirate's rudder, you could make a lot of money off that if you sold it to the right person, the right company, the right government. Um, especially if they were a well-known pilot, well-known navigator. But these books would have detailed information about all sorts of destinations. Um, you know, what kind of sea you could expect, what kind of sea floor you could expect, how deep the water was. You know, where there might be a reef that you had to avoid. You know, very, very detailed information. So information about navigation, which, you know, it's just, it's little things like that that you don't necessarily consider, but at the same time, they are extremely important in these types of careers. Now, why did pirates become pirates? You have to wonder this, you know, I mean, obviously, we see them as sort of romantic figures now who are out doing bold and brave things even though they were very much against the law and in fact they were branded especially during the golden age of pirates governments branded them as enemies of all mankind they were considered that dastardly well they became pirates because a lot of times they were merchant seamen who worked for legitimate uh, companies aboard ships, aboard vessels, but a lot of times those jobs, um, let's just say they were insufferably abusive. They'd go out to sea, captains would put them on a ship that was completely short of provisions. They, the captain knew they didn't have enough provisions to get everybody through the entire journey. Of course, they're not going to tell anybody this, but that such was the case from time to time. And, uh, well, a lot of times when they got back into port, they wouldn't be paid. The, the captains would steal their money from them, find any excuse to prevent them from, uh, from making what they were promised on the, uh, on the trip they were taking. And I... You know, if you're a sailor and that's the profession you know and somebody keeps uh, abusing it, there we go. A nice full silo. Well, not full. Not, clearly not full. But we've got the first harvest of grass off that field was almost 300,000 liters. So we are well on our way to getting the digestate I'm going to need for this field. And I'm pretty sure that harvesting grass is going to become a daily operation now. It's so sure of it, in fact. It's a little bit narrow getting in and out of here. So sure of it, in fact, that's why I built the shed over there and just parked the mower. <laughs> because 
Well, um, yeah, we're going to need a lot of grass. <clears throat> but yeah, if somebody's abusing you that way, are you going to stick around in that profession? No. And in fact, you know, if you have an opportunity to apply your profession elsewhere in a better way, of course you're going to do it. And that's one of the reasons behind the fact, you know, that's why the pirates decided to do what they did in, in creating um, shipboard rules and electing officers and all of that stuff we've talked about in the past. That was the big reasoning behind it. It was because uh, they got sick of the abusive life that they had been a part of in the past and just they weren't going to settle for it anymore the pirates code if you will they weren't going to suffer abusive captains who took advantage of them they weren't going to suffer not being paid it was going to be spelled out in the rules hey this is how much we get etc etc so that's where they stood and that's where they stand Another thing that's interesting about pirates, something... Oh, what's going on there? That was funkiness. Uh, one thing that we don't... Or that's kind of surprising about pirates also is... When you think about it, of course, all the romanticized stories of pirates talk about... Jewels and treasure and... All the other forms of pirate booty that was available in the world, but... Something got bumped around here because these uh, rollers are awfully tight. I don't know if I can get them out of there or not without moving the harvester. Probably got to move the harvester. But pirate treasure wasn't always gold and jewels and all of that. A lot of times it was something as simple as flour or molasses. Any goods that they could take off of a merchant ship, that's what they were after. And uh, probably 90% of the time that's exactly what it turned out to be was, you know, trade goods. And of course they would have networks set up where they could uh, bring their network, their shipments in these brokers, if you if you want to call them that, would buy the goods for pennies on the dollar, repackage them, repurpose them, whatever they had to do, and then ship them out to legitimate interests who would buy them at full price. So yeah, I mean, you know, cloth, wool, occasionally maybe some silk would be really nice, but you you know you got a lot of flour, rum occasionally, wine was a big deal stuff like that you know just common everyday things but the pirates could make money off of it and of course you know the ships that they attacked were worth a whole bunch of money I would imagine at some point it's possible although ships were almost always registered even in those days so I don't think you could just immediately get away with selling off a ship but they would add it to their own fleet you know they'd get a ship that would cost a lot of money for free so you know that was part of the deal too there are recorded pirate treasures that are exactly what we think of and i'm sure even in in the days of pirates things like this were romanticized these are this is what you know kept pirates going was the idea that someone had done it and so it was definitely possible that we can do this too and uh, one such treasure was captured by a pirate named Henry Avery and he is a legend in the pirating community we haven't talked about him yet but he is one of those guys that uh, you know, even pirates would have said, oh man, Henry Avery, what a, what a dude. 
We want him to be our captain. <laughs> but he did capture one treasure that in modern dollars would be worth roughly 200 million. So, you know, as much as we say it was romanticized, um, not always, not always, there are some genuine pirate treasures that were captured out there. Okay, well, we have gotten a lot done today. A whole lot done today. And now I need to roll this field. See if I can't get it into a, a fertilized state. Or am I going to need to plant this with grass before... Maybe I do need to plant this with grass. I kind of felt like it had already been done. But maybe I need to plow this out and turn it into a harvestable grass field. It's looking like that's what I need to do because I've just mowed this and I should be seeing a fertilized state, but I'm not getting that here. Yep, it looks like what I'm going to have to do. So... I actually really thought that uh, this was a genuinely created field, but apparently it is not. So that gets added to the list of junk on my plate to get accomplished. <laughs> well, we didn't get as much pirates today as I would have liked, but we did get a little bit here at the end. And it was nice to have Elizabeth helping out today. That was very, very kind of her. And again, I will make sure that she gets paid in full one way or another. But I think that's going to do it for this episode of Pirate's Bay Farm. If you enjoyed the episode, do me a favor. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And until next time, take care. <laughs>